Minecraft. In the last episode of Final Fantasy II, I had a lot of trouble facing a difficult area, but there's nothing that a bunch of patience and a change of strategy can't fix. Hopefully this will be appropriate for the end of this episode. Let's go ahead and get started trying to tackle the lower vortex in Area 3. Hello, and welcome back to Final Fantasy II. This is Brian, and after the last episode, you may recall in the previous episode, I really kind of struggled over in Area 3, and after I have kind of an off day like that, I like to do something that makes me feel successful. And so, you may or may not recognize this, but back at the base of Area 2, there was this area that happened to have six skeleton spawners, and then there was a loot box over here with some magma cubes. And I didn't break the spawners at the time because I was thinking I could turn it into a trap. And basically that's what I've done over here. I have got a whole bunch of crazy water streams that I think mostly, there's a few dead zones, but I think mostly this will do a good job of trying to push any of the skeletons who spawn over here, uh, kind of over in this direction, and eventually over to this little lava killing room thing that I've got over here. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see how it works very shortly. And yeah, so I've built this and I was about to turn it on, but I figured before I turn it on, I don't have any kind of like on-off lighting. I have the materials that I could make some glowstone lamps and things, uh, but I think I'm just going to knock out all the torches and turn it on and kind of hope that it works. Uh, so here's to hoping, but before I did that, I wanted to show you what I kind of carved out. Um, and so basically, I've got a little bedroom and a farm over here for when I was just kind of working on it. And there were various resources, like iron and coal, just kind of in the ground over here. And then I have a kind of ugly way that I can walk over here, over to the other side. This is where the minecart takes us back to the jukebox monument. And here is kind of the receiving end of the trap. And yeah, we're going to see how this works. It probably won't uh, quite exactly work. Uh, but I am going to try to knock out some torches and turn it on in a moment. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, I made a few more adjustments, but I think I'm ready to fire the sucker up, and so... Rather than try to come up with some clever strategy to knock out the torches, I have a spawn point that is set right over there. At least I believe it is. Hopefully I'm remembering that correctly. And so I'm just going to knock out the torches, and skeletons will start killing me, and then I'll respawn over here. So, let's start knocking out torches and see what happens as the skeletons begin to spawn. This should get exciting quickly, and it'll probably take me a few deaths before I manage to knock out all the torches in here. Uh, but we will see how it goes, and they're already fighting each other. Awesome. And now they're starting to attack me. Hello, skellies. Please let me knock out a few more torches before you guys do your thing. Let's see, I seem to miss a torch over here. Here we go. I'm kind of amazed how long I'm staying alive over here. Okay, there we go. You died. And did I respawn here? Yes, I did. Great. Uh, and there are definitely still some torches over there. Uh, while there is some light, I just want to kind of see... There definitely are some dead zones where the skeletons are going to kind of get caught. Um, but I do see at least one of them kind of pushing into the back. Yeah, I see a couple of them going over back there. And yes, I see them burning up in the fire, and so that's good. And so it seems like this is going to work. And so let's try to just knock out another torch or two, maybe, if we can stay alive. Ah. Punch, punch, torch, torch. All right, got a couple more torches out. Uh, let's do that a couple more times. Fun stuff. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. I need to get out some of the torches that are kind of in the back. Yeah, I'll just take some more shots at this. This will be fun. Hello, skellies. Punch, punch, punch. Torch, torch, torch. Yes. Awesome. And did I get all the torches yet? I think there still might be one torch kind of near the back. And then maybe I'll be in good shape. And they're kind of firing at each other. And so I'm going to wait for that kind of firing. To, well, I guess that's better for me, probably. They're firing at each other. Where is the other torch? It's back here. There's one. Oh. And I think there was one more. Um, let's go for it. Yes, there's one torch back here. Oh, here's my uh, pick. Great. All right, good enough. I am happy. Uh, I believe that will have them spawning at a good enough rate. 
Hello, let's reprint this. And so now, let's go walk over to the other end and see what kind of good or bad things are happening over here. <laughs> yes, 25 arrows already. Okay, so it works. Great. And that was the purpose of this trap. Mostly for the arrows, although the bones are good as well. I can quickly grow a bunch of wheat while I'm sitting over here. Um, but yes, that is super awesome. I've never really built uh, a big trap like this out of a ton of spawners. Uh, and so I think this will be fun. And so I'm going to grow some wheat and just kind of like see after five or ten minutes how much stuff I get. So I'll see you guys in a moment. All right. It is definitely working super well. I am pleased. I'm basically just spending a little bit of time over here. I farm up some wheat real quick. Oops, I go ahead and I tear all that wheat down and I can replant. And then periodically I can go and walk over here to the other end of the skeleton trap and collect all of the drops. And yeah, you can see what all is here. Kazing! And I just picked up another 17 bones and 20 arrows, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is working well. I'm going to do this for a little while, and then, yeah, I think I mentioned there was loot in a uh, chest over here that I never bothered to bring back, and it was good loot, too. It had, like, uh, some gold armor with protection, and then, like, uh, some crazy swords with different crazy things, and some unbreaking picks. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely have a bit of loot that I need to ferry back over to Area 3, where I'm currently stationed. And so, I will spend some time at the farm over here, and then bring some stuff back, and see you guys back over at Area 3, and we'll be ready to try to tackle that area again. Alright, I made one more refinement. I added a water stream to help bring all of the skeleton drops over to me. And then I can just kind of sit here and wait for the drops to just kind of fall into my inventory. And so long as I'm here, I also went ahead and put some dirt down. Because then, if I am sitting here, I can always choose to farm up some wheat while I'm doing this. And so this feels kind of super efficient. I don't know. These things are always kind of silly, but they're fun to build. Um, I haven't built very many, uh, but with all the skeleton spawners over there, even with a relatively inefficient trap, it still turns out to be reasonably efficient. And I can just kind of sit back and get all the wheat I'm ever going to need uh, to have plenty of food for this whole map. And in the meantime, I'm gathering tons of arrows. I've already got like, I don't know, six stacks of arrows or something like that that I've got put away in a chest. And I can always walk over here to kind of like pick those things up. And then when I'm finally done and it's time to come out, I can just exit right over here uh, and hop out and go do whatever it is I need to do. And so yeah, that's pretty good. So in any case, I've already ferried some of the uh, equipment that was all in this chest over to the other base. I will probably do the rest of it in a little bit, uh, but I will make a little bit more wheat uh, to go with the crazy amounts of wheat that I've already got going over here. I've got a full stack over here, and you can see the arrows that are starting to stack up. And yeah, I'll do the rest of this off camera and bring you guys back in when we're ready to play some more of the map. Okay, I am back over at the base at Area 3, and back from the skeleton farm, and I actually have a fair bit of good inventory. I've separated things out a little bit better. Um, but I have a number of potions of fire resistance and regeneration and instant damage potions. Uh, I have a number of buckets. I brought over some lava from another area. I have some pistons and some redstone and some golden apples. Over here, I have various tools. I have all those crazy gold tools. I've got a couple of sets of enchanted gold armor, as well as extra tools and things over there. Tons of arrows. I've got like 11 stacks of arrows. I've got the fire charges I brought back from another area. I've got more iron if I need it. I've got tons of food. And then, yeah, a little bit of miscellaneous. Uh, a bunch of extra bones and glowstone. And then a bunch of blocks. Lots of cobblestone. And so I'm actually doing okay in terms of like inventory and having things, which is good. Because that's exactly what I needed after the last time when I died so much and I lost so many items inside there. And so I'm feeling good about that. There are a number of ways I could attack this next area. I could use pistons to like build bridges out to take out spawners. Um, or I could just try to, you know, busk it again and go straight down there and uh, see if I can do better with button pushing than I did last time. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I just wanted to give you an update of kind of like what my inventory and status is. And so I'm going to get prepared to head over there again and we'll see what's next. It is always nice to start off the day with the suicide mission. 
And so I have extremely minimal inventory. I'm right up above where I believe the birdcage is. I took out most of the other water streams that were making it so waterlogged and miserable the last time I kind of jumped down on top of the birdcage. And this time I'm going to wait for this water to go mostly down and then jump into it again and hopefully try to get on top and just see if I can take out a couple of spawners and assess the situation a little bit better. I know that water takes a long time for the gravity to kind of affect it and bring it all the way down, and so I'm going to wait a while uh, before I jump into this water stream. And that'll also allow me to kind of jump past the gas and blaze spawners, hopefully. But now let's try jumping down into here. Oh, nope, here's the blaze spawners. All right, so I'll fall down again, hopefully. All right, and now I'm on here, and now let's see if I can at least take out a spawner or two before everything kills me. All right, great. Uh, and yes, I can see that it's the bird cage, so that's exciting too. And wow, actually with the... Uh, I wonder, there's only five discs in here. Should I go for it? Why not? That would be exciting. Let's take that. And let's put some water right there. And while no one is shooting at me, I don't need any food yet. So I'll make a quick cut. All right, tons and tons of stuff is spawning around me, but I'm just gonna see if I can make a run for it with no armor. And so, here goes nothing. Yeah! Bop. Nope. All right, but we did get into the birdcage, so that is heartening. I took out a couple of magma cube spawners that were over there, and so, yeah, I think I could do a couple of quick suicide runs, probably, uh, and take out a number of the spawners that are down there, and so I'm going to take a shot, and then maybe we can get in the birdcage more safely. All right, I have even less inventory this time. Put the water bucket back in a chest so I don't have to waste it, hopefully. And once again, when I think the water has gotten far enough down, I will jump in and see if I can take out a few more of the magma cube spawners that are right on top. Um, yeah, and then if I do that once or twice, uh, I think the birdcage will be much more tenable, hopefully. And so we will try this. Let's get away from those other spawners. Oh, dup, 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 dup. <laughs> wow, one bad hit and you're in bad shape, though. All right, let's give that another try once or twice and just see if we can make any progress here. All right, let's try this again. I'm trying to wait longer this time before I jump down into the water. Although I want to make sure there is some water to jump into. All right, there we go. I'm right by all the blazes, which kind of sucks. All right, but here is the thing that I'm trying to jump down on top of, and... Oop, dup, dup! I want a spawner. Spawner, 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 spawner. Yes, there's another spawner taken out, and I could probably get one more if I can get out of this water stream. Ah, I'm on fire. All right. But I did take out one more spawner, so I can do that again and make more progress. All right, here we go again. Here goes nothing. Yeah! All right, and which side... I think the side with the spider over there might be... I've lost track of where the last spawner... There it is. I can see it over here. Right. It was right by the water stream. Okay. So if I can just get over here... All right. Magma cube out. All right. So there's skeletons and things. Uh, all right. And of course the blazes that I think just kind of spawn as I fell through that area. I'm not sure if there's other blaze spawners kind of right by. But I did take out all four magma cubes. So that is definitely progress, because I won't have to worry about that anymore. And so now maybe I'll go a little bit more geared up and try to uh, do an assault on the top. I'm not sure still what I'm going to do next. But I feel like I'm making progress. Probably edit out just some recon. Oops. I don't see too many bad guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's easy to look at Enderman in there. All right. I've decided I'm going to switch gears and take a look at this from the bottom. And so I'm going to go back over to the starting island. The Shellshock Island, I'll go down to the Victory Monument and take the rail cart over and just take a look kind of from the bottom. So I'll see you guys over there. I should mention while I'm over here at the starting island, there was Area 1, Area 2, and Area 3. Uh, there's a fourth direction to go uh, that doesn't have an area marker. I did try sailing out in that direction at some point, and there's just a big bedrock wall after you sail across the ocean. And so it seems like there's nothing hiding over there, but I did look because I was curious. 
So in any case, as I recall, the exit down to the right. Victory Monument kind of area is down through here, so I will see you guys down there. All right, so I came down, and we have never... There's the Victory Monument. We've never actually ridden the cart over here, although we have reached the bottom of Area 3 and seen where the rail cart is going to end. And so let's head down over there and then take another look from the bottom. I have not too exciting inventory, but I do have some armor and... Uh, a chest to go ahead and put some items down. I think I might go ahead and put out kind of all the lava that's at the bottom and just try to kind of walk around the bottom and assess the situation from down there, see if there's any more spawners I can take out. I actually brought an iron pick. And yeah, we'll see what we find. All right, I'm down at the base of the railway now. I went ahead and set my spawn over here. I brought down a fair bit of equipment, uh, set down a little infinite water pool over here, but just wanted to try to assess things from the bottom. I also finally got rid of all the water that I had swirling down. And so this is kind of what we're looking at. The birdcage is up here, and I haven't tried to get too close to it to see what all spawners start activating as I get up there yet. But that will be the next thing to attack. I also put out all of the lava that's kind of around the base of this thing and put out just enough torches to be able to see uh, light and to prevent monsters from kind of spawning on the obsidian, although there are monsters spawning on the obsidian ribbons over here. And it's also the case that I often accidentally look at Endermen, it seems like, uh, because they're kind of spawning on the obsidian and they're very hard to see, and so I need to keep an eye out for that. But I guess with the inventory that I have right now, we can go up here together and just try to get a sense of how close I need to get before crazy things start spawning over here. Because I was experimenting kind of right over here, just trying to get a sense of... All right, I hear monsters, but I don't actually see anything spawning yet. And, okay, there is a blaze spawner right there, and so I'll probably get within range of it real soon now. I hear a spider, and I'm not sure where he is. And I just want to see if there... Okay, I'm in range of that spawner kind of right there, and there's actually two spawners together. And so I might try to, like... It's right next to this... Oops, I'm within range of the spawner again. I might try to just pillar up directly underneath it and see if I can take out those spawners. That might not be a bad idea, although the blaze will probably knock me off if I pillar up. All right, I'll think about a couple of options there, but that might be a good first thing to do because those blaze spawners are going to be kind of the first line of defense, it appears. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, I think what I'm going to try to do is build a staircase up to the blaze spawner. So I've got some bricks... It is the case, now that I've removed the water, that there's kind of a lot of monsters spawning, because there isn't a whole lot of room for monsters to spawn, and so there's a lot of monsters spawning kind of on the obsidian on the bottom and the center, uh, which isn't great, but at the same time it's kind of good, because if I can get most of the spawns kind of confined down there, that could actually work to my advantage. And so, I expect the blazes are going to start spawning and knocking me off as I try to go up here. I need to keep... Oh! I just saw a puff of smoke. Hold on. There's spawners down here that I didn't realize. There was a puff of smoke right there. It's possible that someone just fell down and died. I just want to watch right here and see if we see someone spawn. So I'll make a cut. All right. It wasn't a spawner. Something must have fallen and died, and that was the puff of smoke that I saw. So basically, I'm going to try to build a stairway up to this blaze spawner. Uh, at some point, the blazes will start spawning, uh, and things will get bad. Um, but that's just kind of the nature of the work. And I have enough, uh, plenty of blocks. Hello, skeleton. I did bring along a bow and arrow so that if things like that happened, I could take them out because they would be annoying. And so we're just going to try to start building this and see how it goes. And at some point it'll go badly, but that is okay. All right. And already three blazes is a lot of blazes. Holy cow. And so I'm not sure if I can just like back off from them, if they're still going to be firing at me, or if I can make them despawn. Yeah, I think I'll wait and see if I can make them despawn. So I'll see you guys again in a moment. All right, so I have a strategy that's cheap, but it works. I walk over here, I build a little bit of the staircase, some blazes start spawning, and I run away and let them despawn. 
And yeah, it's a pretty cheesy strategy at this point, but at the same time, I've had enough trouble with this area. I'm gonna get close to a gas spawner in a minute over here as well. Oh crap, speaking of the gas spawner, oh wow. All right, and so now we have more enemies to deal with. And so the strategy might quit working at this point. And it's been going well, and I have a staircase that's almost all the way up to the blazes now. Uh, but we might have to deal with... I've lost track of where the ghast is. Is he shooting at me? Yeah, he is shooting at me. Um, right, we are almost up to the blazes. If I can take those blaze spawners out... Like, the ghast is annoying, but I really don't mind him. And if I take the blaze spawners out, I'm also already almost at the birdcage. And so, I think I will see if I can build a little bit more of the staircase using this strategy. Oops. Alright. Blaze spawners. One blaze spawner. Two blaze spawners. And let's go ahead and put out that lava source brick because it seems like it'll be a pain. Gas are spawning. There's a skeleton in my face. This is all okay because we have taken out the main obstacles that kind of lie right in our way. So that is super awesome. I will let some gas spawn and then take a look at this area. Now that the blaze spawners right there are gone, I think I may try to take another shot at the birdcage. There are still going to be gas spawners. There's still going to be other random enemies who are going to be attacking me and trying to knock me off over here, like this crazy spider. And this crazy spider. All right, that was not so bad. Pretty sure there's still one other spider over here, maybe. All right, let's just try to ignore him. But let's try to get right up over to near where the bird cage. Oh, crap! Is. <laughs> Run! <laughs> All right, now I need to regain some health. I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, let's try once more to build up a little closer to the bird cage. I have some handy dandy blocks in hand. I expect some gas to start to spawn. Oh, crap, crap, crap! Darn it. I don't know where that skeleton is who is firing upon me. Um, I may need this spider eye as food at this point. I have plenty of food over here, but just so while I'm standing here and can kind of survey this, I should regain my health. So where was the skeleton who shot me the last couple of times? I guess if I fell off this way, the skeleton is probably shooting from over here. But I still don't see him. There's a skeleton down there. <laughs> and here is a random creeper who appears to have seen me. So let's go ahead and deal with him. Hello, creeper. You had taken a lot of fall damage. Here is a skeleton who... Oh, he has not seen me. So I'll leave him alone for now. Yeah, and I just need to keep my eye out for that skeleton who kept shooting me off. All right, I hear... Ah, there's a skeleton. Hold on. Let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of this creeper that just dropped from somewhere. It's trying to kill me. Okay, and now... I still hear one more skeleton, but I'm not sure where he is, so let's try this again. Oh, crap, where is he? There he is. Okay, great. Skeleton gone, gas are about to spawn. But in the meantime, let's keep trying to build our way up to the birdcage. Because we are really close to it now. Like, it's right there. That's cool. Alright, and there's our first ghast. Oh, crap, crap, crap. Oh, holding on, holding on. Ghasts, as I always point out, are mostly more annoying than they are difficult. Uh, and so, I don't mind having, oops, crap, one or two gas on the map while I'm trying to do something. Eventually, if a few more spawn, it will get too annoying uh, to try to handle. But for the moment, oh, crap, crap, there's another one right in my face. I'm about to die. Okay, now I'm going to run away or die. Fair enough. I spawn right over here. I will let those guys despawn. Uh, I have plenty of other inventory. I can get, you know, another sword and a pick and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys in a moment, but we're getting really close. All right, I did run over here in order to pick up my armor and some of my stuff. I've got basically everything back except for a bow. I even killed a ghast in melee combat who was right up in my face, but I didn't have the recording running then. Oops. Um, but we are getting really close, so let's just give this another try. We'll have some more ghast spawning, but let's see if we can build... 
kind of a staircase up the rest of the way over to the birdcage over here. Oop, there is a skeleton somewhere. Where is he? He's on top of the gas spawner. You can just barely see him there. All right, he is dead. We'll have another gas in a moment, or right now. Oops. But let's go ahead and, oh, we're getting so close. Yep, there's another gas. Yep, 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 yep. I'm gonna keep building just because we are so close. Let's also eat. And I guess I can put that there. And then that there. And then put some walls here. But here is the birdcage once again. Oop, dip, dip. Put the fire out. I will grab a disc. And I think this time I will be able to make it back to safety. Zoom! Hooray! Patient strategies are a little boring, but they always pay off, especially after you've tried other things that haven't been working. And so I am happy to do that. I will go hide under here in my little base. Uh, but we got, what is that, 13? Yes, the gold disc. Uh, awesome. So I guess, yes, let's go ahead and bring it to the jukebox monument, and then we can decide what we're going to do next. So I will hop aboard a minecart. I will leave this ugly area behind. And at some point, I'm going to have to re jigger kind of all my inventory in order to get stuff different places. But let's go drop off this disc and listen. Or perhaps not listen. This is an awful disc to listen to. Uh, but then celebrate our victory and figure out what we're going to do next, which I guess will be going to the nether. You'll recall that there's kind of a nether portal underneath the monument down here. Um, but super cool. I'm glad to have that area behind me and feel successful after the previous episode I did so poorly. So let's head over there. Here we are in the jukebox monument, and this is where disc number 13 goes. And we get a golden apple. Hooray. And so I guess I will let this play in order to kind of keep with tradition, even though it's kind of an awful track full of noise. And you recall that basically there seems to be a nether portal down here. And at this point, that seems like the only place I know where to go. And so I guess that's where we're going to go next. And I guess what I'll need to do is get a water bucket in order to head down there. And then... I guess take a peek and see what's in store for us inside the nether and then decide if we want to kind of cart all of our inventory that's over kind of at base number three up here and down here over to there or if I'll need to bring the inventory or if there'll be more loot there. I'm not really sure what to expect. You know, I don't think I've ever listened to this track this far in. And so I will leave the track running so that we can celebrate our victory. In any case, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time and we'll take on more Vinyl Fantasy, apparently in the nether. That track ends abruptly, unless something has gone wrong. In any case, oh, it's still going. Well, while it's still going, I will keep with our Joe Hills tradition and say we found this disc in the underground vortex of death. Oops of death. Done. And I will light it up just like that. That was an unpleasant area. I'm glad to have it behind me. So this is a spooky track, but it's more interesting than I originally gave it credit for. I'll give it that. And I hear a skeleton. I wonder if he spawned kind of like down underneath here, assuming that this is similar to the previous jukebox monument that this opens up into another area. Can't really dance to this music. Can't really call it music.
Okay, perhaps that really is the end of the track. For anyone who's still watching, I will thank you again. See you again next time. Hope you're having a great day.